chemistry and physics. That's, that's, I don't make that's, that's logged in. Everybody's got that available. I know that, but I'm just saying. And also, um, you're saying also what? relating to this, I'm also questioning. All right, so you, when you said that everything was created, you're saying everything was created. Like humans were created at the same time that dinosaurs were, and you're saying they lived together at the same time. Yes. All right, then why are we not finding any um, what you call um, fossilized human remains that are in correlation with dinosaurs in the same strata? With 24 chromosomes each. With 24 chromosomes. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, if you're saying that they have not changed entirely from, you know, to the point where they could have came from a common ancestor, tell me where they are at. Because there is no human remains 25 million years back in the strata. You're, you're talking about no human remain, remains 25 million, well, 25 million years worth of depth, according to evolutionary assumptions, right? Well, that'd be geology. That wouldn't be evolution, that'd be geology. It'd be evolutionary geology. I just mentioned a, a subject called flood geology that, yeah, yeah, that is a 6,000 year old. Flood geology is going off based off of text. Well, if you look at the uh, magnitude of the text, formations evidence. I was telling you about, it's based on observation too. Everything's based on a text, and everything is based be, on observation. That would be biased to say that it fits what you say. To say that, you know, it's biased to say this fits what I say? Yeah. Well, no, I'm saying what you're saying when you're talking about the flood over in North America, which you showed on the slide up here earlier, that would be biased to fit what you were saying relating to the text. Only if there was not another true. explanation possible. But if you can think of one, say it. But uh, continent-wide, single geologic formations of deposits, there is no known mechanism. Every evolutionist on the planet believes that there was a worldwide flood on the planet Mars, for goodness sake, 3.8 billion years ago, an asteroid smacked into Mars, and the whole planet got flooded. They believe that it could happen on Mars, and they believe the Grand Canyon on Mars, which is 1,500 miles long, is three times longer than ours, they believe that formed in three weeks. Well, why, are, why would they say all this kind of stuff? They even call this the Noachian period of Martian geologic history, because they ended after Noah. Now, they believe a planet that today is a total desert, it's dry as a bone, had a flood of planetary proportion. They look at a planet here that's only one-fourth land, the rest is two miles deep in water, and they make fun of me for saying we once had a flood. We look like we just got over a flood right now. Now, Mars's gravity is only 0.38 R. That's why it can't hold an atmosphere. Its atmosphere is only one one-hundredth as thick as ours. And so, uh, would that water explain the water? Hmm? It, would that explain the water? It would explain why the water's not there anymore. I believe there was a flood on Mars. We've got evidence. We've got rivers, valleys, beaches, and oceans. It's all dry as bone right now. Canyons and everything. And deltas, but it, it, all the water's gone now. But we say things like these kinds of giant formations can form in only thousands of years. And they make fun of us for that, saying that. But they believe it happened in a matter of, of hundreds of years or weeks on Mars. You see, this is not letting the left, uh, the left hemisphere know what the right hemisphere is thinking. This upsets me because that's disingenuous. Now, and and then, then I'll have someone just want to you know, say, well, Noah's flood, of course, has got to be a fairy tale when it, it scientifically there's evidence that points to it. And if you can believe that Mars could be flooded, why can't you believe that the planet Earth could have been flooded once? Why? Indeed, um, why not? My question was, okay, your question. The, other, the other question was, was actually not related to the flood. It was just I kind of got off there. Um, my original question was, when you thought humans and when all we were created at the same time, you're talking about the ge geographic strata when we got off. Now, my question was um, asking about the humans. I mean, if you're saying that there's a flood, and you're saying, you know, and also with the, you said there's four different pairs, or four different uh, pools for, gene pools for humans. Yes. And, you know, well, there is scientific data supporting that. Yes. But what about the animals? You're saying there's two of each kind, and what about their gene pools? Well, there's many more than just one gene pool for any animal out on the, you know, as you said, that came off the ark. Mm -hmm. So, where do these other animals come from? Well, let's see. Um, You've seen all the flood killed out everything right besides what was on the ark. Besides what was on the ark, yes. And then what happened to the plants that, you know, they didn't say anything about plants being on the ark. They also didn't say anything about, you know. A lot of plants went extinct, too. The Permian extinction, which uh, evolutionists call it, uh, makes the Cretaceous extinction look like a picnic. Many, many species didn't make it through Noah's flood. But if you're, you're saying that. Permian extinction. Hmm? If the plants were extinct. Permian, 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 Permian. What? Can you put a date on the Permian extinction in terms of years ago? 
what, you, what is called a permanent extinction is really like what you're talking about. So I can relate these two. What we're talking about is layers of rock that have different kinds of fossils, layers of rock with different kinds of fossils. The next layer of rock doesn't have a, a bunch of different fossils. It was in the rock before, true, correct? They're missing in the upper layer, next upper layer, right? So we, we call that an extinction event. Now I would say that happened at some point during Noah's flood. Uh, an evolutionist would say the Permian extinction happened 250 million years ago, or that the, the uh, Cretaceous extinction happened 65 million years ago. All you really have is a layer of rock that doesn't have fossils from the previous layer. The coelacanth fish it went extinct. Actually, they actually found a specimen of coelacanths. We have coelacanths alive today, but they're missing from the fossil record for 100 million years. Yes. They avoided being well, we fossilized. Have, we haven't found them. We're not saying they're not fossils. We have not found them. Well, that's, that's, really that's now we're, we don't, now, we don't that's, the bottom of the I'm talking about data. You're talking about it's out there somewhere. It's possible. That's hope. Oh. It's, it's, you're, you're, relating, you're relating back to, well, he's relating back well, to. Well, is it, I'm are you talking data. about an actual fact or a hope? I mean, I'm not talking about hope. I'm talking well, about you're hoping coelacanth fossils are there. You're actually told me they are. If they, if they are living now, oh, wouldn't sure. they have existed then? And if they existed then, wouldn't there be some evidence of them existing then in between there and now? Just because we haven't found them since 1932 when we caught one. Just because we haven't found them. Yes, they've Doesn't existed. Mean they don't exist. They've existed all this time, but they did not leave fossils. There's tons of fossils in the layer that evolutionists say is 100 million years ago, all the way back to 365 million years ago. Do any of them look, do any of them look like mammals? Do any of the Permian, pre-Permian uh, fossils even remotely resemble a single mammal that exists on the planet today? Well, what about the Morganucodon rat that we're supposed to have evolved from? Doesn't that resemble a mammal today? Is, is that in pre-Permian rock? Have, it's in Permian, it's 210 million years ago. According to evolutionary time scales, you can go down to Sam Noble Museum and see a little model of it. It looks just like a mouse. According to Except they made it two times bigger. According to, according, to according to anyone who looks at it, sir, have you ever seen these? It is, it's a mouse. It looks just like a little rat sitting there. And they drew that from bones. Is there a single published scientific paper that credits that with being a mouse or a mammal of any kind? Look at look at. I would be astonished. I follow this stuff mm -hmm. off and on. I'd be astonished that it wouldn't be in every single newspaper around the world because it would completely overthrow the entire evolutionary model as it, as it stands today. Go to this. You're, you're telling me that they discovered it and somehow or another it's been kept secret from the rest of the world, and you're revealing it to us today. I never said it was a secret. It's in all the museums. It's in the Chicago Field Museum and the Museum of Natural History of Smithsonian, D.C. There's the Morganucodon rat fossil. There it is, a little brass model of it. Are you denying that that fossil exists, sir? I'm, I'm denying that it, that it is even closely related to mammals. Then why is it called the mother of all mammals by the Smithsonian scientist? The article in the Smithsonian Magazine, but sir, calls that be, it the that be mother of all mammals. Wouldn't that be going against you, though? Because if you're saying it's a mother of all mammals... Oh, I just think it was a rat. I don't think it's us. The, the Smithsonian says you're that that's... You're going to mother of all mammals, and you're saying, and you're you know, correlating that mother of mammals. We are mammals. I do not believe that that rat is the mother of all mammals. That's what the Smithsonian said. Why would it call it the mother of all mammals if they don't believe it was a rat? Okay. I'll, I'll give you credit for that. I suppose you should, sir, because it's what every evolutionist on the planet believes. <laughs> Anything that looks like a whale, anything that looks like a porpoise, anything that looks like a pea in, in pre Permian rock. Okay, you're talking about why they're there. They all disappear. Evolutionists have got their missing links, and yes, we have our missing links too. There's nothing a creationist wouldn't like better than to find a human skull stuck in a T-Rex tooth. Okay, we'd love to find that. You've got your missing links, we've got ours. You've got your explanations for it, we've got ours. Ours are that bird and mammal fossils always float when they die. That's what, and when they're drowned in a flood, that's why you give them cement overshoes and throw them off the East River Bridge. They also, the, uh, the animals would be fossilized in the places where they actually live, at the elevations they live. It's no surprise that the very deepest of all fossil layers has wormholes and bacteria fossilized in it. Because that's where they live today. If the whole world was covered in a flood today, what would you have at the bottom layers? You'd have the worms, the clams, the benthic bottom feeders, then you'd have your littoral zone things, you'd have your fishes, 
then you'd have 